If you would have told me this time last year, in one year we'd be watching a UFC lightweight title fight that didn't involve Khabib, Tony, Connor, Dustin, Gaethje, any of those top guys, but instead involved Charles Oliveira and that guy from Bellator, Mike Chandler, and it was a ridiculous fight, fight of the year, I would have thought you're crazy. But UFC 262 proved a lot of things wrong. Here we are, let's talk about it. Co-main and the main event were a lightweight showcase, starting with Benil Dariush and Tony Ferguson. Now this is an important one for Tony. He lost his last two, obviously Oliveira and last fight he was fighting in the main event, and of course, Justin Gaethje ruined his life about a year ago. Back with his old tough coaches, Freddie Roach is in his corner, THE Freddie Roach, and honestly this was more of the same. Dariush won by unanimous decision, swept every single round, and it was when I say it was the same, it was the same. Benny pieced him up on the feet, took him down, controlled him, you know, he had a nasty heel hook in that something popped in Tony's knee and, you know, Tony's the kind of guy who never shows any emotion. He was grimacing, he was in so much pain, did not tap like an absolute animal. Guy knows, like, you're allowed to submit, I mean, and yeah, pride gets in the way, but he was an absolute animal for getting through that. He's tough as hell, but it's the same thing, you know, he gets pieced up on the feet, destroyed on the ground, like, I don't know what this is. It could be age, it could be, again, the Justin Gaethje effect. Is that a real thing? It could be. But I don't, I don't know. Like, where do you go from here with Tony, right? You know, he was on a 12-fight win streak, got the interim title, had a strip because he tripped on a cord. All those matchups against Khabib got canceled. It's just a really bad look for him. And could this be it? I don't know. It, it's tough to say. But all credit goes to Dariush. I mean, he did what he had to do to win. Impressive win. And he's slowly moving up. You know, he, he wants the top five guy. And it's tough because in, in the 155-pound division, the top five or six are like, they're not just your regular top five in the division. They're in a class of their own. So maybe you got to give Dariush like a Dan Hooker. I don't know. He wants a title eliminator. When you have Poirier, Gaethje, and of course, Connor, like you're, you're not going to get that. Not yet. So maybe a Dan Hooker would be a pretty good fight. All in all, pretty decent co-main event. Massive W for Benny. Tough L for Tony. The Gaethje curse is real. As I said in the intro, main event time, lightweight championship, Khabib, oh, nope, sorry, no Khabib, Charles Oliveira, Michael Chandler. I don't even know where to begin for this one. 28th UFC fight for Charles Oliveira, finally getting his first title shot. Michael Chandler also getting his first title shot in his second fight. Let's skip to the end. Oliveira knocked out Chandler in the second round, but it wasn't that simple. First of all, you have to think about these two guys. Obviously, there's a big height difference, but Oliveira is more precise. You know, he's going to try to piece you up with slick combos. Going to be really tight and then get you to the ground and just destroy you. Where Chandler's kind of like raw power. I always call it slick versus savage. That's the perfect way to look at this. And you know what? That's exactly how this first round was. The height difference was very noticeable. Oliveira got his back early. You know, Chandler did exactly what DC talked about not to do. As wrestlers, you get up on your knees. Instantly got his back. Chandler hand fought the hands really well survived exploded out and then every time he was landing on charles it was affecting him you know joe rogan said it was stunning him you know it is what it is but it got him bad and then all of a sudden the second round starts charles first punch just clean drop mike and it was just over from there and you you gotta wonder if mike instead of going for the ground and pound when he had uh charles on the ground top control maybe you back up let the ref stand it up and try to get him out of there on the feet because the first round and the second round were were night and day but really interesting you had the wrestler trying some jujitsu who almost tried to choke out charles and charles was just piecing up him on the feet this is one of the craziest fights ever and it wasn't a 25 minute slugfest it wasn't an instant knockout a la, you know connor and jose aldo but the back and forth and then the instant round two like you think going into round two after what you saw round one? Oh, Mike's got this in the bag. That's what I was thinking. You know, I didn't have a horse in this race. I just wanted to see the best guy win. I thought they were both, you know, pretty deserving. And I don't know. This this was crazy to watch. And I, I've never seen someone so happy to win a title either. You know, just it's one of those feel-good stories. 28 UFC fights, two divisions, multiple weight cuts, or sorry, weight classes with bad weight cuts. He'd been through a lot in his life, and he finally got that title. And this brings up the question, you know, what do you do next? Chandler says he's going to have the belt in 12 months. We'll see about that. But you got to think, there's Poirier and McGregor coming up. Poirier and Charles, that's the fight everyone was calling for for the title before. So if, if Dustin wins, that's easy to make. If Connor wins, then you're in some questions. Does Connor even want that fight? You know, Charles is a great fighter. But is that a big draw like a Poirier McGregor or a Gaethje McGregor? 
And again, Gaethje, he's still there. He was the champ, he only lost to Khabib. What do we do in this division? I don't know. I'm glad I don't you know, have to make these calls. If they wanted to start paying me the big bucks, UFC, you know where to find me. But you gotta wonder, man, if, if what would have happened if Mike stood up in that first round? Could we have a new champion? Who knows? Fantastic main event. This was worth every penny that you did or did not pay for. I mean, definitely pay for your pay-per-views, guys. Come on. Amazing fights and uh, big congrats to Charles Oliveira. Another great UFC pay-per-view has come and gone, and this wasn't just the lightweight showcase. You know, you had poor Jacare getting his arm broken on the prelims that the mic picked up clearly. Really disgusting. You had Edson knocking out Shane Burgos and, you know, Burgos 10 seconds later dropping. That was ridiculous. And, of course, the fall of Tony and the rise of Charles Oliveira. Next up, we got Izzy and Marvin Vittori. We got Nate and, of course, uh, Leon Edwards for five rounds. And, of course, the flyweight, uh, Brandon Moreno and Davison Figueredo coming up in a couple weeks. So that should be a great pay-per-view. Uh, thanks for watching this one. Stay tuned to the channel. More content coming, and we'll see you next time.